Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT. I happen to be in version 12. We're looking at a module today. We are looking at, it's one of Ripper's, um, and it is only available right now. It's kind of in uh, early access, if you like. Uh, it's called World Setting Sync. Um, so it will become widely available, uh, but it's just available for patrons at this time, as I mentioned. Um, and it's right there at the bottom here, and we're in my Curse of Strahd world. Uh, and you can see this is, you know, it's version 1.0, so fresh off the press. Um, what's it for? So this is this is kind of one of those things that if you have multiple worlds, you might find this an absolute lifesaver. Uh, if you're only running with one individual world, you might not. <laughs> it very much depends on... Uh, how you've set up your games so the idea is is this is going to let us if we've got multiple worlds like I have uh, let me just get rid of this um, I have my Fandelva campaign uh, which has Stormwreck Isle in it I have Curse of Strahd and I have different testing worlds and things so I've got multiple of them now what it allows us to do is to define a world as a this is the standard these are the standard modules and settings and everything else that i have and any other world that we like we can say hey use those settings so pull across so for me i'm going to have effectively two different types of game that i run using foundry I'm going to have my non-automated version, which is what Curse of Strahd is. Yes, I've got little bits in there, but I'm not using MIDI QOL and all of that automation in it. So it's much more, um, uh, shall we say, traditional? I'm not sure if that's appropriate term, but anyway, not automated. But also, I've got my Stormwreck Isle Fandelva campaign that I will continue building out on that is very much automated. Now, because we get all of those lots of options, lots of settings, setting up our audited animations, our spell effects and all of those things, every time you create a new world, you've got to go through that again. This stops you having to do that. Now, in the traditions of this channel, right back in the early days, we're going to dive straight in and we're going to work through it and work it out together. And you get to have a good old chuckle where I make stupid mistakes and can't read stuff. So, yes, I do in the other page because I'm not completely stupid. I do have Ripper's wiki up and we know Ripper's stuff is really well documented. So this should not be too painful for you guys to watch. All right, so where do we start? Now, first of all, this, as I said, this is my Curse of Strahd, my non-automated world, and I want to set this up as a, hey, this is a particular type of world that I want other worlds to copy. So I'm going to go to configure my settings, and as we can see, I've got all of my mods in here. I want to go to world setting sync at the bottom, and these are the options it gives us. So first thing I want to do is I want to identify this world as being the master world. So straight away, it doesn't look like a huge amount of options. We're not opening the synchronization manager yet. But you can see that I've got two options at the top here. Is a master world for agnostic settings. So that is core foundry settings and modules. And then we've got a world system setting so what i mean the man is so clever so what he's done basically if you're running pathfinder games and dnd games for example you can have well hang on a minute we have core settings across all of our games and then we have pathfinder specific settings or dnd specific settings well nice huh so setting up a new world when you define it say well this is going to be a new pathfinder world it knows assuming you tell it to that you want to pull all of the agnostic and pathfinder settings across so it'll pull across all the settings and then override any that need to be done for pathfinder so i am going to say is this a master world for agnostic settings yes it is and is this a master world for system settings for this game, uh, so so if enabled, this world will be the master for system settings, users, and system modules. Whereas the master world for agnostics is 
this will be the master world for system agnostic settings users etc so it says it all there so i can tick those um auto check sync if enabled this world will automatically check for changes to agnostic and six system settings on startup well i might want to say no on that because this is well hmm, i don't know <laughs> let's not jump to conclusions all right so um what else have we got here so auto check sync so other world we would probably say yes if we've changed the master world um update our other worlds auto perform sync so if enabled this world will automatically save agnostic and system settings to file on startup okay so yep yeah, we want it to do that silent upload if enabled this world will not notify you when saving agnostics i'm going to turn that off because it's nice to see that happen um, synchronize modules if enabled this world will synchronize active modules uh, yes i want it to synchronize users now this is interesting if enabled this world will synchronize users between oh uh, there's a bit of writing missing there um but that looks like what that's going to do is if i've got five players in my game uh, and they finish let's say they finish the fandelva campaign but they're going to carry on uh, same players and I want to set them up in a different world it will just pull them across to the different world as well so you can have your same group pulled across to a different world it means you can break up your adventures into smaller worlds in inverted commas but actually all the settings come across all the players come across uh, lovely very very nice um, and the last one here is synchronized settings so again if enabled this will synchronize world settings so let's leave all of those on i need to hit save uh, and in theory this is creating this as a core world so to assign a master world for setting uh, for system specific settings we need to identify the master world um, from which we wished to use all system specific settings and modules note this can be the same world as the master world for system agnostic which is what we've done I can open the module settings uh, and check is master world uh, for the system settings. Well, we just did that. We did both of those. Lovely jubbly. Uh, and in theory, that will do it. Now, interestingly, let's have a couple of things here we've got. We've got an open and exclusion list where we can say actually do not take across, for example, builder bonus. Don't take that across. Okay, so we can say, and it says at the top there, this will be this list will be used to exclude module systems or core settings from synchronization. On a master world, which we are in, exclusions will not be saved to the synchronization file. So we can say, for example, do not uh, we only use let's pick something quite silly. We we only use Dice so Nice for this world. Don't copy that one across. We don't need it for anything else. There was something very specific we wanted in our master world that we don't want in others okay um so we can do that let's confirm all right now this top open synchronization manager you can see this is just saying hey look do you want to manually save a settings file well okay i've just done that and you can see we've got some blue writing up here saying that it is saved that all right so are we done here okay save changes uh let's return to setup so in a secondary world, and I'm going to create a new one just so that we don't get confused with anything else that's happened, we can create a new world and we'll just call it sync world. Okay, game system, this is going to be D&D 5th edition. Um, I'm not going to worry about those things. I'm going to create this world. So any world not marked as master, which is, will be this one, Let's go into this and join this brand new game. Of course, we're going to have no scenes or anything. Uh, we've got our very new, you know, inviting your players getting started. We've got nothing. Uh, let's clear that. It just annoys me. <laughs> and of course, we've got no modules or anything in here at all. So what we need to do is we need to enable the world setting sync so we can save that and straight away look what it wants to do it is saying the master world says you want all of this lot um 
combat hard auto rotate all of the modules uh, we've got some tabs at the top here so this is all the modules it's saying you want these because this is what is being used in our curse of strad users um, we've only got game master click to expand yeah we don't need all of that uh, agnostic settings so permissions is it going to copy across our permissions? Is it going to copy across our default token configuration, our dynamic token rings, um, and our world time? That's interesting. Wasn't expecting to see that one. And then we've got our system settings. So our configuration for our combat tracker, uh, the system migration versions, encumbrance tracking settings, um, the fact that I've got disabled experience tracking because I'm using milestones in Curse of Strahd. So any of those settings that are not the default, it is suggesting these are the ones it's going to change. And of course, I can untick and say, actually, no, I don't want that allow summoning or, or whatever it might be. Or actually, I don't want to disable the experience tracking for this world. I, I prefer to use milestones, to be honest. Um, I fought against milestones for quite a long time, going, no, it should be XP, my old school brain. Um, so there we go. All right, so we got this option of what we can do now. Uh, so we can sync all. We can sync just the modules, just the users, the agnostics, or the system. Let's sync all. Are you sure? Okay, well, let's give it a go. This is a blank world. So some of my change settings require reload. Let's do that. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Um, so it's talking about, yeah, it's talking about what it's doing up here. It's doing a lot of stuff with levels, of course. We use levels quite a lot in our stuff. Uh, and it's now brought all of these in. Uh, and it's now looking at potentially doing the updates and syncs for all of our modules now. So not only is it bringing across our modules, it's also saying, and this is really, really useful for things like MIDI QOL automation is because once we've got it set up and working how we want, we can just bring it across. And what do I want to proceed with this? Yes, I do. I need to restart it again. Okay, unable to open Compendium World. Oh, Curse of Strahd. Okay, so that's my module. That's fine. That's not a problem. It's not an official module. Um, and the last thing it wants to do is it wants to uh, data used for theming. Um, because I set my theming specifically, I can sync that as well. Yes, I do. Uh, yes, I do. So again, it's only complaining about my Curse of Strahd world. It's not an official module. All right, so that reckons it's done everything. So what we should do now is we should be able to look at our Manage Modules, and we should be able to see that everything I wanted brought over should be here. I've got my wall height, I've got my torch, tagger, spotlight omnisearch, splatters in there, smart target, ownership viewer. It's brought all of those ones in, but not any of the others, which is great. Uh, combat boosters in. It has tried to do my cursor strad because I said that that was a module. Understandably, it struggled to find the, the things for that because it's mine. Item piles is in. Everything looks really good. All right, so uh, one way to test this is if I attempt to roll some dice. Let's roll a 1D, uh, 1D20. Let's see what that... Okay, brilliant. So not only... The reason why I did that is because I obviously have set up Dice So Nice as a module. Uh, and I have set my settings of how I want my dice to look. So let me do that again. So if you watch, if I can actually type, you watch the, the let's do, um, let's do 5D20 instead. If you watch these dice, the colors, the theme for those dice, that's brought all of that over as well, which is exactly what we would want to see. So it proves that there might be the odd glitch still, although it is released. So, I mean, you know, there's always going to be tiny little things that need to be tweaked. But it has brought across all the modules. It has brought across all of the settings for those modules. And importantly, at least in that tiny little test, it appears to have done that exactly right, which is brilliant. So that's the idea. That's what it does. Now, we could set up another 
uh, another game world where we are not pulling across the uh, you know all of the module information so you just saw me walk through that i can say bring across players or bring across system settings or bring across everything i just did everything um, but you also saw that it will bring across particular settings that we want or we don't want once i mean i suspect i'm still going to fiddle with my settings on the curse of strad game um, they're starting this Tuesday. It's getting really, really close. They're actually kicking off properly. Um, obviously, I was away last week and things like that. Um, and it might we might find that there's a couple of things that aren't quite the way we want. Possibly changing a couple of modules, but more likely tweaking a couple of settings. What a great thing is, is once we've got that and we know that's working the way that we want, we don't have to touch anything but I can import those into other game worlds knowing that those settings will work the way that I want for my games that works for my players. What a brilliant little module. I mean, it's just if you've got multiple worlds, it's just a massive time saver. Okay, so let's have a little look at the wiki then. Because again, rippies, rippies, <laughs> rippers wikis are really good. So you can see here it talks about setting up the master world, which is what we just did. And it talks about the agnostic settings and the specific world second settings. Uh, what to do in the secondary world, which we just created that secondary world um, and basically did that. And he gives some examples here. So here's some worlds. Oh, as it turns out, he's used dice so nice. So world A is a master for the agnostic and master for D&D. &D. So my Curse of Strahd world. And it brought in all of its modules, including Dice So Nice, but not MIDI QOL. It can bring across the players. World B is a D&D &D 5 ed world, but not a master. Uh, and world C is a master world for, uh, for Pathfinder. And that master world for Pathfinder has Argon for Pathfinder 2E, for example. Uh, and you've got a fourth world, which is a Pathfinder world that's not a master. So you can see you've got one world, world A, is the master for everything, including the D&D system. World B, uh, sorry, world C is only the master for the Pathfinder system. So when we set up world B, it's going to pull in from world A all of the agnostic stuff and all the D&D stuff. When we set up world D, it's going to pull in all of the agnostic stuff from world A, but it's going to pull in all of the Pathfinder game stuff from world C because we've said that's the Pathfinder main world. So world C is not an agnostic master. When we create world C, it's going to pull all the agnostic stuff from world A, and then we're going to build it for the Pathfinder stuff. Interesting, huh? So we end up with these, these master worlds for agnostic, probably only one for that, and then a master world for a particular game system. Okay, and he just walks it through here really, really clearly. World A, you activate Dice on Ice and MIDI QOL. Brilliant. You launch World B and it prompts you to enable Dice on Ice and MIDI QOL. And we saw that when I created my world. It asks you to copy the settings for Dice so Nice and MIDI QOL from World A. And yes, we saw that and we proved it with our Dice so Nice. If we launch that World C, it prompts us to bring in Dice So Nice and to bring in those settings of, for Dice So Nice from World A. Um, but it won't bring in MIDI QOL because MIDI QOL is not available outside of the D&D. Yeah, so its settings are ignored as it's not a D&D world. It's a Pathfinder world. Okay, World C will share, uh, share a player with World C, uh, with World A. Blimey. That's not helpful, is it, if I can't even read? Um, so you're asked to sync the player. So it'll sync its colour, its their avatar, and other things if you do that. Now, I don't particularly use player avatars. I tend to use only character avatars. But if you have player avatars, it will bring them over. Uh, and then, of course, if we will launch that World D, it's going to prompt you for Dice So Nice. 
it's going to ask you to copy the dice sign dice sign dice so nice settings from world a and it's going to you know want to bring across the pathfinder settings from world c how good is that so i mean that that's it i mean ripper's wikis are always really detailed there's not a lot on here because you've just seen it in action and it really is that simple so let's just run through that quickly again so i'm going to go back to my curse of strad world just as a quick refresh of what the heck we had to do so in game master here go in as my game master i'm going to go to see it's just saved my settings again because i've come in here remember i turned off that um, that option for silent settings. So we're going to come into our game world that we want to be the master. We're going to activate world setting sync. We're going to go to our configuration options and go to our world setting sync. We're going to choose is this for the agnostic settings? Yes, in my case. Is this for the for the world settings? Yes, in my case. Cursor Strad is my master master. Uh, I need to tick those. That's the silent upload bit. I saw the blue messages because I unticked that deliberately. Um, and we want it to synchronize modules, users, and settings. So that's all I have to do here in this world. I come out. I create my new world. Um, I don't want to knacker any of my other worlds because they're all part way through. Let's call this sync 2. <laughs> Okay, and this is going to be D and D again, and I can go into sync two, and as soon as I come in, I need to go and activate just that one module. I don't need to mess with any other modules because it's going to do it all for me. Save that module setting, and bosh, it's going to prompt me for all of those things. And of course, I can turn stuff off. Let's say, oh, I don't want Omni Search in this one. I don't need it. I can just turn that off. So we ought to prove that point, of course, and media optimizer I'm going to turn off. Okay, so now that's my system settings um, that I've turned off. Uh, let's do it. It's going to reload a couple of times, of course, because it's got to bring things in. It's now saying, oh, hang on a minute. Um, do you want to sync these two? So these are the two I turned off. Yeah, so I, it's like, no, don't apply those. Don't need them. It's possible I just did something wrong. Yeah, because it's it's going to keep coming back and saying, hang on a minute, do you want these settings? Because these are the ones I've said no. So I'm going to uh, close that window. It should be fine. Not 100% sure if that was the right way to do that, but we're going to find out. And then when we go to our, if I can actually do it, we go to our modules. We've got all of our things. I've got 31 instead of 33 because it's not brought over those two because I said don't. That's all good. Um, but it will, should have brought over everything else. So once again, quick little check, public roll. Please roll uh, 12d12. And there we go. And it's brought those dice settings over. So really, really easy to use. And it just, it just works. Does what it says on the tin. So I hope that's helpful. I mean, if you roll, roll multiple game, game worlds, it's probably a lifesaver. If you're only running one world, um, you probably don't need it. But it's there if you want to use it. So just a reminder, this is World Setting Sync by the Ripper. Of course it's by the Ripper. <laughs> the Ripper 93. Um, you, if you can't access it yet, it's only available to, um, to supporters at the moment. Um, on the basis of, uh, you know, it's, it's only just released. It's one of those little things he does. He, you know, brand new releases, they go to Patreons first as a little reward, uh, which is really nice. Thank you very much. So um, it won't be long before that's available more widely, I'm sure. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a good day. And I will see you in the next one.